there was one key resilience skill that you think an individual has to have first, what is that skill? There are seven skills that help you build resilience, but the one thing that I think people need to understand or individuals need to get to grip with first is actually how they think when faced with adversity. So they need to, they need to have a conscious um, analysis of actually what their thought pattern is. And what they need to identify first and foremost is what is what they call their explanatory thinking pattern, their, their explanatory thinking style. And that is your habitual thinking pattern when under pressure. It's habitual, it's formed by the time you're nine years old and you have developed it from your primary care. Now, one of the, thing, one of the things that you need to understand is well, how do I think when put in a, a situation of adversity? And it could be any adversity. An adversity for me might be a different from an adversity from you. So different people will interpret different situations as, as being an adversity or a problem. And there are three aspects particularly to explanatory style. The first aspect is what they call me or not me. So when something goes wrong, do you tend to personalize it or do you tend to blame others? For example, say you come into the office in the morning and there was an email from your boss which said, when you get into the office, please come and see me immediately. When you are looking at that email, is your first reaction, what have I done? Or is your first reaction, what does the boss want now? If your first reaction is, what have I done? That means you have defaulted in that moment to me or personal. Or if your reaction is, what, is the boss, what does the boss want now? It's external or blaming others. The most important aspect to remember at this stage is that neither is actually accurate. It's just your default thinking pattern in the moment. The second aspect of explanatory style is whether or not you see things as permanent or temporary, always or not always. For example, if you were asked to change jobs, say for example, you were asked to go on to a change project management team, do you, and you don't want to, you actually don't want to change your job role at the moment. Do you see that change or do you view that change immediately as permanent? which actually increases your resistance? Or do you say, well, hang on a second, this is actually something that's actually got a time frame to it. This is temporary, and I'm going to be doing this for two months, and then I can revert to what I was doing before. People who think in not always, always very clearly see an end. People who think permanent never see an end to negative situations or what they perceive as negative. The third aspect to explanatory style is everything or not everything. When something bad happens, do you see it as being pervasive? Does it affect every part of your life or do you keep it specific and contained um, with, with very clear boundaries? For example, a lot of people in the public sector at the moment are being asked to take pay cuts. Whenever you are asked to take a pay cut, do you immediately go, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I can't cope, there's no way I'm gonna be able to work with this amount of money and as far as you're concerned, that's just a really negative thing to happen your entire life and it's one in a series of things that um, it's just adversity for you. Or do you tend to say, right, hang on a second, it's a 10% pay cut. Um, okay, so I need to cut back on the cigarettes, I need to cut back on the budget for going out, but actually uh, my mortgage is okay. I, I, can, I can still cope here with my core payments. You make adjustments mentally because you don't see it as affecting absolutely everything, which leads, by the way, to a thinking trap called generalization, which is actually inaccurate thinking. Now here's the issue with explanatory style. I'll recap, there are, three, there are three aspects to it. Me, not me, always, not always, everything, not everything. If you get caught in the thinking pattern of me, always, and everything, explanatory style, then that in itself leads to the mental mindset of learned helplessness, victim mentality, or, and you will give up. So as far as you're concerned, it will always happen to you. It's never going to go away because it's permanent and the whole thing is ruined. It's always for negative. So the trick and, and the most important skill in my mindset for resilience is to be flexible in your explanatory style. We've all got a style. For example, I am a me always and everything. So I have to work really mentally hard to dispute when sometimes I go, that was my fault. I have to say to myself, well, hang on, Mary, maybe it wasn't your fault. And sometimes with the everything I think, mm, I'm losing the will to live here if there's a big adversity in my life and sometimes say, well, hang on a wee second, this isn't gonna last forever and it's certainly not gonna affect everything. So you have to dispute 
your own habitual thinking patterns and that does take a certain level of self-awareness but this skill can be taught and that is the one thing that I think is extremely important for people to gain perspective um, when they're trying to gain and learn resilience in the workplace.